Good evening, and welcome to St. Rose of Lima Parish for our 40 days of life uh, mass and at the beginning of our 40 days of Lent in this first Sunday of Lent. Please stand as we welcome our Archbishop here with us tonight. In Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, 
all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the cloud, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings so that waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal things. The word of the Lord. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O oh Lord, make known to me Teach me your paths, guide me in your path, and teach me, for you are God my Savior. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Remember that your compassion, O oh Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness remember me because of your goodness, O oh Lord. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, and he teaches the humble his way. Your ways, O oh Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for the sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had been once been disobedient, while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through the water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God to clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and power, powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory. 
the Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, from now on, it's just like a normal mass. You can sit down. <laughs> First of all, uh, let me just say what a joy it is uh, to be with this parish family of St. Rose. Uh, and I'm very grateful to Father Matt for his hospitality and welcoming here, me here for this mass. This mass was supposed to happen last weekend, uh, but uh, something intervened. I can't imagine what that was. <clears throat> so here we are this week. Uh, and the reason, although I would love to come to St. Rose for, for just the reason of being with you good people, but this is also a special Mass uh, that is to accompany the kickoff, if you will, for this year's 40 Days for Life. And uh, being a strong and staunch supporter of that beautiful apostolate, uh, I certainly wanted to be here to, to bless this effort and to get us off on the right start by doing the most important thing that we do and that celebrate the Holy Eucharist. But as Father Matt mentioned in his comments at the beginning of the Mass, it's the beginning of the 40 days for life, but it's also the beginning of the 40 days of Lent for us. And uh, these are very special days. It's a time of grace. It is a season of grace. And I hope you see Lent in that light. Quite honestly, I'm, I'm one of those really odd people who, uh, for me, Lent is, is like my favorite time of the liturgical year because throughout my life this has always been a time of great grace for me and great growth in in the life of the spirit and I hope it is for you too so don't you know some people look on Lent as oh my gosh this is that horrible season that the church imposes on us just to make our lives miserable for for 40 days uh, so that we can have Easter joy well it's much more than that it's really meant to be a time of real spiritual growth, spiritual conversion of our hearts. It's meant to be a time of great grace in which God touches us in a very special and powerful way. We read in the Gospel today really the beginning of the public ministry of Jesus Christ. The words we hear from his mouth in tonight's gospel are the first words out of his mouth as he begins his public life, his public mission. I got a little quiz here. Can anybody tell me? We've only heard words from the mouth of Jesus one other time up to this point. Does anybody know when that was? Think. What's that? Finding in the temple. Was that Dr. Paul back there? He should have known. He was quoting scripture at me in the sacristy before Mass. Yeah, the last words we heard from Jesus were, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be about my Father's business? So, but these are the words of his public ministry the reason he came. He's now ready to embark upon that ministry. And this immediately follows his baptism by St. John the Baptist at the Jordan River when he undergoes the baptism of John, not because he needs baptism, 
but to sanctify the waters of baptism and to take our humanity down into the waters of baptism to prefigure what would one day happen for us. And having been baptized, the gospel says that the Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert where he remained for how long? Oh, 40 days. And so Jesus prepared himself for his ministry, his mission, the mission for which the Father sent him by spending these 40 days in the desert fasting and praying and being tempted by Satan. Jesus prepares for the most important part now of his life. Now think about that for one moment. Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of God. He is the eternal Word made flesh. He is the second person of the Most Holy Trinity. He is God Himself in the flesh. And yet, even as God, although in human flesh, he still needs to prepare himself for what, is, what lies ahead for him. He needs to prepare himself. And how does he prepare? By fasting and praying. By fasting and communing with his Father in prayer. Now again, th think about that. The Son of God needs to pray. The Son of God needs to, to fast, to do penance. Not for his sins, but for the sins of the world. So I always ask myself when, when people don't take seriously in their own lives the need for prayer and penance, sacrifice, what makes us think that we can get by without it if the Son of God embraced this and prepared himself through prayer and fasting and temptation? We are all tempted. He, in other words, he, he gives us the example. He sets the bar for us. If the Son of God needs to do this, how much more do we need to do it? How much more do we need to do this? Because we're not the Son of God. We are not sinless. <clears throat> And so, we should see that Jesus is inviting us to join him. To join him in prayer and fasting. To prepare ourselves for what lies ahead. Certainly, we're preparing ourselves for the Easter celebration, the celebration of the Paschal Mystery, the Passion, Death, and Resurrection of our Lord. And we are getting ready at Easter, to renew our baptismal promises, even as we welcome into the church the newly baptized. You know, I, I think we, we, we remember that moment, maybe we forget about it until we're there on Easter Sunday, right? And then all of a sudden, oh, that's right, it's Easter Sunday. We, we do this renewal of the baptismal promise thing now. We should be thinking about that all during Lent. We're getting ready in Lent, through prayer and fasting and the works of mercy for the poor and the needy, we're getting ourselves ready to renew the baptismal promises at Easter. To recommit ourselves to our Christian discipleship. And so we, we join with Jesus during these days. 
But then look at the first words of our Lord. You know, I, I think it's very important that we, we look at the bookends, if you will, of the public life and ministry of Jesus. Because I think they tell us something. What are the first words he utters, and what are the last words he utters? These are the first. This is the time of fulfillment. Now is the time. The kingdom of God is at hand. Okay, that's the announcement. It's the time of fulfillment, and the kingdom of God is at hand. And so what does he instruct us to do in light of that news? Repent and believe in the gospel. It's a call to repentance. We, you know, sin and talking about sin is not in fashion anymore. <laughs> but we are all sinners. I, as I would join St. Paul and say, and I am the first. And so Jesus calls us to repentance, to conversion, to turn away from our sin, and to turn back to God. Why? Because we're to believe in the gospel. And what is the gospel? What is the good news? That God has come to redeem us in his son, Jesus Christ. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him would not die but have eternal life. That's the good news. That's the message Jesus brought to the world with, with what everything else he did. All of his other teachings. All of his miracles. All of his signs. The reason he came was so that we could have life and have it in abundance. Eternal life. He came to save us from our sins and from death and to open for us the way to eternal life with God in heaven. The redemption. Salvation. That's the good news. And in a certain sense, what more do we need? What more do we want than that gift of life in Christ? And so Jesus tells us to repent. Turn back to me. Turn your hearts back to me. For I am rich and full of mercy and redemption. I've come to save you. Do not stay in the darkness of your sins and the chains of sin, but be freed. Let me free you and lift from you the burden of shame and guilt and restore you to life. Repent. And his last words are then to tell us now to take this to the world. All authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and know that I am with you to the end of the world. He came to save us, and he sends us as church to proclaim this saving good news to the world. But it takes our individual repentance, each one of us. And Lent is that great time when we try to get everything back on track. No matter how awful a sinner we might think we are, nothing is too big for God's mercy. Nothing is beyond the reach of his mercy. All of our sins, all of our vices, all of our addictions, all of the darkness that we walk in sometimes is not beyond the reach of the light and the love and the mercy of God. He wants to free us. It's the evil one who wants to keep us in the darkness. He can't let 
that happen. And one of the great darknesses in the world that we need to combat is the darkness and the evil of the culture of death. You know, and I think I said that we're preparing ourselves during Lent for something, for Easter, for the renewal of our baptismal promises, but I think we're preparing ourselves in these days for something much bigger. I, I predict, I'm not a prophet, but I predict difficult times ahead for the church, for the disciples of Christ, because the culture of death is gaining strength. John Paul II, St. John Paul II, was the first to coin that phrase. And it was what he used to describe this darkness in the world, this darkness that has descended on the world. A culture of death that no longer respects the dignity of every human life and every human person. And it's growing stronger, not weaker. And I fear that we are headed for kind of the ultimate showdown, if you will, between the culture of life and the culture of death. We are supposed to carry the culture of life. And these good people who participate in the 40 Days for Life are just part of a movement that seeks to do just that, to combat the evil of death, especially as it is experienced in the horror of abortion. 62 million plus unborn children have lost their lives to abortion since the Roe versus Wade decision. About a million a year in this country alone. This is, the, this is the clearest sign of the culture of death. And really, I think everything else follows from that. If we can't respect the most innocent, the most vulnerable of all life, is it any wonder that we don't respect other forms of life? The aged, the handicapped, the sick, those that are no longer useful. The racism that we see in our culture still. All forms of injustice and the degrading of human beings. The exploitation of women, especially through pornography all sorts of horrors and evils that human beings inflict upon one another. But I believe it starts when we can no longer respect the most innocent. And so for those of you who are participating in the 40 Days for Life, I applaud you. You have my profound respect and esteem and, and gratitude. But let us all Rise up and let the Lord prepare us for what lies ahead for us as we seek to be a leaven in the world, light in the darkness, shining forth with the good news of God's mercy and love for the world. We pray for our own conversion and for the conversion of sinners everywhere so that we may all live a new life in Christ. In one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In response to God's loving mercy and care for us, with confidence we can present our needs now before him in prayer. For the souls of Francis and Virginia Ship for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church and all of society, that we may become sensitive and aware of the needs of all children while in the womb and after their birth, for their parents and their families, that we ensure that they have adequate resources and accompaniment for their life journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations and their leaders, May the Holy Spirit inspire hearts and minds to implement actions supporting values in life at all stages and states of life, from the unborn to the elderly, the sick, the poor, the disabled, the healthy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children who have died from abortion and for their mothers and fathers, for mercy, peace, and the loving embrace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of our parish faith community and for all who participate in the 40 days of life and other life-saving work, that they are filled with courage, compassion, and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the petitions, we now speak to the Lord in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people which we make through the powerful intercession of the Virgin, Mother of your Son, Mary Most Holy. Answer these prayers according to your will, which we know then is always for our good and our salvation. All these things we ask through Christ our Lord. Guest. 
Come, my joy, my love, my heart, such a joy as none can move, such a love as none can part, such a heart as joys in love. Come my way, my truth, my life, such a way as gives us breath, such a truth as ends all strife, such a life as killeth death. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus, Sanctus. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings 
and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Paschal Feast, pa the Passover, with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood, to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. And grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Alexander our Bishop and Peter his assistant bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Adios Dei, qui tolis, peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Adios Dei, qui Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Invite the Blessed Mother side to come forward first, followed by the St. Joseph side. Uh, 
Well, I'll go down to the uh, satellite location to bring communion to those of you there. Simply remove your mask before getting to the front so nothing's blocking you from receiving Jesus and to remain physically distant even while in the communion line. Body of Christ. Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Archbishop Sample, for coming and celebrating this 40 days for life as we begin our Lenten journey. We hope to be those that cultivate that culture of life with you. So thank you for coming. Just a couple of brief announcements. Um, uh, this past week, one of our parishioners, Bob Pender, passed away um, just a week or so shy of his 91st birthday. And so his funeral will be next Saturday, um, the 27th. So for Bob and the consolation of his family, we pray eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let the perpetual light shine, light shine upon him. him. Through the mercy of God, may he rest in peace. And next weekend, the second Sunday of Lent, will be the Archbishop's annual appeal. Um, I chose not to do it this weekend. <laughs> uh, so we'll have our, our video from our shepherd so you get the Archbishop twice in a row. Hopefully this will be much more interesting today. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. culture of life and respect for the dignity of every human person in our state and country and for healing in our church, we pray, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.